Good day, brothers and sisters, wherever you are tuned in. We really thank the Lord for everything and uh, for what He's uh, doing for us. In such a time as this, we need uh, an anchor. We need uh, a sure foundation of uh, what we believe in and uh, most of the time that we are living in are such an interesting time and uh, this is the gospel sounders rekindling reformation from Kenya and uh, I'll be bringing you a series on the terrain and uh, today I want us to just go through a few things and uh, the presentation of today I'll be tackling the in the introduction I'll be looking at the financial crisis that is looming and uh, we need a preparation we need to make sure that uh, we are not caught off guard because uh, Christ tells us that uh, we are not the children of darkness that this day should overtake us and so the children of light we have to be like what Joseph was in Egypt and so with the rise of uh, pestilences and diseases all over first of all I like us just to be encouraged uh, in the Word of God and uh, I like to read something as we start this presentation I like us to go to the book of Psalms, book of Psalms. Ninety-one. The division of Psalms. Ninety-one. Here is uh, what uh, we read as we start this. Heavenly Father, we pray that uh, your presence may be with us. You may surround us. You may encompass us with thy angels. You may educate us in thy word, and uh, because you have not given us a spirit of fear that we may be bold and courageous to face the times before us. And so bless thy word as we look into it. In Christ Jesus' name I pray. Amen. The division of Psalms 91 we read from it is verses 1. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom will I trust. Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler, and from the noisome pestilence he shall cover thee with his feathers, and under his wings shalt thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flieth by day. And the word of God continues to say that verse 6, no, for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. Only with thine eyes shalt thou behold and see the reward of the wicked. Because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the Most High, thy habitation. <coughs> there shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling for he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways they shall bear thee up in thine hands lest thou dash thy foot against the stone 
that shall tread upon the lion and uh, the dragon shall thou tremble under feet because he hath set his love upon me therefore will I deliver him I will set him on high because he hath known my name he shall call upon me and I'll answer him I'll be with him in trouble I'll deliver him and honor him with long strife will I satisfy him and show him my salvation these are the promises of the Lord to his children in such a time as many things are happening we need to be sure that the Lord will do what he has promised he will do. Faith is believing that the Lord will do what his word exactly says that he shall do. And so with the, what is happening around the world, we need a sure anchor and Christ is that sure anchor. And so many things are happening. But uh, I'll urge you to look again into the word of God because it gives us a surety of the times that we are living in and how the saints will be able to go through it. And uh, we have to prepare because we are going to have a financial crisis and already it is having, we are having it. Uh, many times when we speak about a financial crisis, what people only think is about not having money but this is not the case per se when we talk about a financial crisis a financial crisis can be in a two way whereby you are uh, uh, you do not have money and again you actually have money but you can't spend it there is no commodity all the markets are closed. This is a financial crisis. You may say that it's a food crisis, but when you look at the other side of it, it is you have finances, but they can't help you. That is a crisis already that touches on the finances. And so we look only on the side where actually you there is no money in your pocket, but look at the side where you have money in your pocket, but you can't spend it. That's a crisis in itself. And this is what we are seeing right now, that the markets are closed and... Uh, some people have money but they can't spend it and uh, some of those who have been keeping the money so that it may not be used for the glory of God we find that um, the book of James tackles these times that we are living in the book of James chapter 5 there is a time that the Lord has asked his people to give out money to do the work but um, they have slumbered or uh, uh, we have a, a, a habit as seventh day or adventist of procrastinating what the lord tells us but look at the book of james chapter 5 when we think that there is a time that is set upon where we shall use our finances think about it right now that now you have a finances you will want to give to a ministry, but it can't help the ministry at all because they can't go out even for evangelism. They can't go open air. They, you have money, you want to give it, but it is of no help. Such are times that we are living in. And I, I want you to observe something in the book of James chapter 5. We are told, Go to now ye rich men, weep and howl for your miseries that shall come upon you. Your riches are corrupted and your garments are moth eaten. Your gold and silver is conquered, and the rest of them shall be a witness against you, and shall eat your flesh as it were fire. You have heaped treasure together for the last days. These are what the people are doing. They are heaping treasure for the last days. And they think that their finances will have any value to be used at such a time as this. But now I just remind you, look at the market. You have money, but you can't buy. What is the use of the dollars or the money that you are having now in your pocket? It is useless at the moment. And things will even get more worse and worse. I said this when we were in February of this year that we are going to have a crisis. And this is the crisis we are now facing. I never knew that we will have this virus going around. We are told, Behold the high of the laborers who have ripped down your fields, which is of you kept back by fraud. Cried and the cries of them which have ripped or entered into the ears of the Lord of Sabaoth. You have lived in pleasure on earth and been wanton. You have nourished your heart 
as in a day of slaughter. Ye have condemned and killed the just, and the, he doth not resist you. Be patient therefore, brethren, unto the coming of the Lord. Behold, the husbandman waited for the precious fruit of the earth, and hath long patient for it, until he received the early and the latter rain. And I have said that the financial crisis in some of the previous presentation, the financial crisis is to prepare a people to receive the latter rain, and that is what the book of James says actually. We receive the early and the latter rain. When you see the financial crisis looming, people are preparing for the early rain and the latter rain. That is James chapter 5 verse 7. We are told in verse 8 that be also patient, establish your hearts, for the coming of the Lord draweth nigh. Grudge not one against another, but lest ye be condemned. Behold, the judge standeth before the door, not to go into the sanctuary, but to come out of the sanctuary. And so, the things that we are facing right now, it is uh, the foreshadowing of the second coming of Jesus Christ. And he who has promised he will come, surely he will come and he will not tarry. And so I was just uh, speaking about uh, uh, this financial crisis and uh, how people have been keeping up. And this is not easy to, uh, to put on somebody, but uh, just to remind us of things. People have been keeping money thinking that there will be a time they will release that money to be used. But... Uh, it is not going to be of use in a few short years that we have. And uh, some of the cries that will be heard among us, the people of God, I want you to see something which is so important. This is uh, Testimonies to the Church, page 174, paragraph 4. This is what we are told. Testimonies to the Church, Volume 1, page 174, Paragraph 1. I hope you have it on your screen. It says, The Lord has raised up us that prize eternal life and that can feel and realize something of the value of the soul. And they have freely bestowed their means to advance the cause of God. The work is closing, and soon the means of those who have kept their riches, their large farms, their cattle, etc., will not be wanted. Go ye unto rich men, how your richness have conquered, your silver has been moth eaten. I saw the Lord turn to such an anger and wrath and repeat this word Go now, ye rich men. He has called. But you will not hear. Love of this world has drowned his voice. Now he has no use for you. And let you go bidding you go to now ye rich men. I saw it was an awful thing to be thus forsaken by the Lord. A fearful thing to hold on to a perishable substance here. When he has said that if we sell and give arms, we can lay up treasure in heaven. I was shown that as the work is closing up and the truth is going forth in mighty power, these rich men will bring their means and lay it at the feet of the servants of God, begging them to accept it. The answer from the servants of God will be, Go now to now, ye rich men. Your means is not needed. Ye withheld it when you could do with it in advancing the cause of God. The needy have suffered. They have not been blessed by your means. God will not accept your riches now. Go to now, ye rich men. Why am I speaking like this? Look at this. One MR. 228.2 This is what the Lord said. God's purpose in giving the third angel message to the world is to prepare people to stand to him during the investigative judgment. This is the purpose for which we establish and maintain our publishing houses and our schools, our sanitarium, hygienic restaurants, treatment rooms, and food factories. This is our purpose in carrying forward every line of work in the course. 1 MR 228.2 I asked Seventh day Adventists how many are having these facilities to do the work in such a crisis that we are having right now? And God's purpose in giving the third angel's message to the world is to prepare people to stand true to him during the investigative judgment. But as you can see, the crisis we are having right now, be it pestilence, be it the fires in Australia, be it the COVID-19, wherever you can call it, 
we are failing we are not be we are not able to uh, uh, advance in the third angel's message we are failing because god's purpose in giving it is to prepare us to stand and the things that make us to stand are things like publishing houses school sanitarium hygienic restaurant treatment rooms and food factories how many are, are we having here in kenya such institutions that can make us stand during this time of investigative judgment and under the third angel's message none you will not find one in kenya in us you will find a few places which are not even functional very few uchi pine and we have uh, other places like the Sinjurian ministries and others who have done these things and uh, uh, the ministries like messengers of light are trying to do this and uh, the apocalypse ministries but in Kenya what are we doing in Africa what are we doing we are preparing to fall during the investigative judgment and the means have been withheld with the people who have it this is the we have a financial crisis and then we will want to release the money to do the work when we are already in crisis and that cannot be possible you tell me where you can go with your money right now and buy a land, build a sanitarium and start working amidst a crisis. You cannot do that. And so we are having crisis and those who have been having finances have been withholding them. And so it has been a, 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 a gradual failure in the work that we have been given under the third angel's message. And so many will come with the, their money that uh, it should be used for such a time as this but it will be too late to use such a money it will be too late and we are seeing this firsthand look at this this is uh 20 176.3 i was pointed back to a time when there were but few who listened and embraced the truth they had not much of this world goods. The ones of the coast were divided among a very few. Then it was necessary for some to sell their houses and lands and obtain cheaper to serve them as shelter or home, while their means were freely and generously lent to the Lord to publish the truth and to otherwise aid in advancing the cause of God. As I beheld these self-sacrificing ones, I saw that they had endured privation for the benefit of the cause. I saw an angel stand by them pointing them upward and saying you have bugs in heaven you have bugs in heaven that works not all endure unto the end and great will be your reward i'm looking at the side of the financial crisis where you have money and you cannot spend it i'm looking i'm not looking at the financial crisis where we don't have money i'm looking at the other side the flip side of the coin where people have never looked at it that a financial crisis can be that you have money but you cannot use it and this is the crisis that we are having right now a flip of the coin we only look at the one side of the things but we don't look at the other side and so the lord wants us to, wants to remind us something that um, while we still have time let us use the means we have 176.4 much means have been brought into the ranks of sabbath keepers and i saw that at present god does not call for the houses his people need to live in unless expensive houses are exchanged for cheaper ones but if those who have an abundance do not hear his voice cut loose from the world and dispose of a portion of their property and lands and sacrifice for god he will pass them by and call for them who are willing to do anything for jesus even to sell their homes to meet the ones of the cause God will have free will offering. Those who give must esteem it a privilege to do so. And so the Lord is saying that in this crisis that are looming, what we could have done, those who are holding to expensive homes, they could have sold them and got cheaper ones and be able to bring in the means to do the work. The work could have advanced, but now here is the crisis. And... Uh, the the work that the the work that the church has failed to do the work that the church has failed to do in the time of peace look at uh, this is uh, christian service 158.1 read it with me the work which the church has failed to do in a time of peace and prosperity she will have to do it in terrible crisis under most discouraging forbidding circumstances the warnings that the 
while conformity has silent or withheld must be given under the fiercest opposition from enemies of the faith. And at that time the superficial conservative class whose influence has steadily retarded the progress of the work will renounce the faith and take their stand with its avowed enemies, toward whom their sympathies have long been tending. These apostates will then manifest the most bitter enmity, doing all in their power to oppress and malign their former brethren and to excite indignation against them. This day is just before us and we are not talking about a day that is before us. We are talking about what is happening around now in the world. We don't present prophecy because of what is happening on TV or on the news, but we read the signs of the time. And we are told that the signs of the time do not lie. The members of the church will individually be tested and proved. They will be placed in circumstances where they will be forced to bear witness for the truth. Many will be called to speak before councils and in courts of justice, perhaps separately and alone. The experience which will have helped them in this emergency they have neglected to obtain and their souls are burdened with remorse for wasted opportunities and neglected privileges. Right now people are saying if we had sanitarium, if we had publishing houses, if we had all these things mentioned in 1MR228.2, we will be doing a great work. But it is too late to wish. Look at what Steps to Christ 47.2 says. Steps to Christ 47.2. Desires for goodness and holiness are right as far as they go, but if you stop here, they will avail nothing. Many will be lost while hoping and desiring to be Christian. They do not come to the point of yielding the will to God. They do not now choose to be Christian. The time that we could have chosen to do these things, we have just been wishing, we have been having desires for goodness and holiness so that we may be able to stand during investigative judgments. But these have been desires for goodness, but we have not come at a point where we, have, we can yield everything for the cause of the Lord and be able to spend and expand to be used by the Lord. And now we are told it will be a time when it is too late. And I know what somebody is saying, that uh, this COVID will go away and this pestilence will uh, recede. But uh, yes, you are right, the COVID may go away and all these pestilence and uh, natural disasters may go away for a time. But I want to assure you that uh, as uh, sisters came in AD, 66 and besieged Jerusalem but through the providence of God he withdrew and then Titus came over and he overtook the city. This is what the Lord is doing to Seventh Day Adventists and the people around the world. It's, it's like the Lord is letting the wind loose for a moment so that the people of God may see what is happening and then there will be a time of peace. But in this time of people peace where God will again give the world to prepare now for the last push people will say oh this was just a happening it has gone away and there is no alarm there is no reason to cause alarm but I can assure you this will happen and then we will have a short time of peace as it were in AD 66 going to AD 70 and then it will come again into a full blown up time of trouble and those who are now preparing again to sit down and slumber for a little while. Brothers and sisters, you have to think again. We are in the midst of a crisis, and even though the crisis will go away very soon, it will come back, and when it comes back, it will not go away. And so, let us think about what the Lord is doing and what the Lord is telling us right now. He wants us to be prepared and he doesn't want anyone to be lost. And so, there is another thing that uh, actually the devil brags about. And that is what I want to show you. The devil has studied prophecies. And he knows that this crisis is going to get people off guard. It is in the book uh, 
uh, prophets and kings. I want us to look at uh, prophets and kings. And uh, it is page Prophets and Kings, page uh, 184, paragraph 2. Prophets and Kings, page 184, paragraph 2. Quote, the devil said, He brags because he knows that the children of light knows how to procrastinate and sleep for a little while, but are just a little slumber. And then the scourge will overtake you. Thus the world will become mine. I'll be the ruler of the earth, the prince of the world. I'll so control the minds under my power that God's Sabbath shall be a special object of content. A sign? I'll make the observance of the seventh day a, day a sign of disloyalty to the authorities of the earth. Human laws will be made so stringent that men and women will not dare to observe the seventh day a Sabbath. For fear of wanting food and clothing, they will join with the world in transgressing God's law. The earth will be holy under my dominion. I'll give you just an example uh, applying to this quote, where actually the devil says that for the want of food and clothing, thus the whole world will be mine, for only this want of food and clothing. Right now in the lockdown of uh, the markets, tell me Seventh-day Adventists. We who are still uh, are um, relying on the market. Right now, where I am, the markets are being open from 4 to 6 p.m. every day. But I want you to think of a scenario where actually the markets are locked down and then they have to open on Friday from 4 to 6 p.m. and you have to buy food and prepare for the Sabbath. And you tell me if that is possible. Or they move the markets to be open on Sabbath and on Sundays. That is when you can buy food for a short uh, while. And then they are closed down. Right now, because they are being open from 4 to 6 p.m. So that you can buy food. But there is a, a possibility of markets being open one day of the week so that people may shop. Or two days of the week and what if brethren those days fall on the Sabbath or on the Friday in the evening and you have to prepare your food ready and be able to observe the Sabbath for fear of wanting food and clothing they will join with the world in transgressing God's law the Sabbath will be a sign of contempt to many and so we have been singing about people having a country home and having a land where they can grow their food and be able to exist and survive the crisis that we are having. But it has been like playing a guitar to a deaf person. But it is only in crisis that people now can come back to their senses when sometimes it is too late. And so, all over the newspapers, there could be a financial crash before end of Trump's first term, experts say, citing debts. The most severe economic breakdown in the history of the U.S., and not only in the U.S. Some few weeks ago, we saw the dollar collapsing and reducing a Kenyan shilling to nothing, where actually one U.S. dollar was going at 86 Kenyan shillings. From a hundred plus, it went down to 86 shillings, which was not a simple thing. You think that you have money, yet you don't have money. And these things will continue happening. World is drowning in debt and it spells disaster for everyone. With all these pestlanders, and you know, when there is uh, the people who have said money matters and money issues, you understand that when we have such a crisis, this what is done is that there is a printout of more money there is a printout of more papers and so in this printout of more papers there is actually a, 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 a lending 
and taking of the loans so as to be able to meet the crisis that is before you. But what it does in the printout of much money, it only spells recession. Because you are printing money, you are not having commodities at the end of the day the money has no value at all because there is no way there's no business going on and so study money matters and study money issues don't be so happy that actually money is being dished out like in loans and all these things no and remember always what the book of proverbs says that uh, the, the the land is uh, a servant the borrower is a, a servant is, he is a slave, and this is what many people are uh, preparing to be. In the book of Proverbs, let us see. People now are so happy that money is being lent without, uh, without interest and uh, with a long period of returning such a money. But uh, don't rejoice so much. My friends, don't rejoice so much because this is one thing that people will be troubling. This is Proverbs 22. Proverbs 22, verses 2. Let us hear what the the Lord says, Proverbs, brothers and sisters, we are in a crisis. Proverbs 22, verses 2. The rich and the poor meet together. The Lord is the maker of them all. But uh, I want to go to verse 7 over the poor and is a servant to the land. so in this loan issues the people are so happy but what we are seeing is that money will be dished out but again there will be time of paying back and how can you pay back when you don't have it and what will the government do or the banks do the next thing they'll be taking is your land, your home, and anything that you have. And so, people think that they can't do anything they can do at this moment. But I tell you, it's a crisis. And it's like the devil is blinding people to do things that they shouldn't be doing. Look at the news and what is happening. We read the next financial crisis. Why is it looking like history may repeat itself? The future where money has no value and has no use. In fact, I tell the people who are listening and watching, start learning what is called butter trade if you never knew such a thing in your life. Because in a little while, money will be useless to you. You may have it, you may not use it or it may be valueless with what is coming to this world. These are just the beginning of sorrows. We are told that when these things happen, actually this is not the real thing. But it is the beginning of sorrows. Matthew chapter 24. Matthew chapter 24. We are told Verse 6, and you shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines and pestilences. And earthquakes in diverse places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. These are just the beginning of the end times. And what we have to do, we have to do it fast. It is not a time for panicking. It is not a time for fear. But a time of rethinking what the Lord has been saying to us since Christ entered his holy place. 
and 10 years on, on from the financial crash, we need to get ready for another one. There is, this is uh, when you count 2008 to 10 years, you come to 2018, and we are in after 2018. And we are seeing these things happening. This four called the last financial crisis. Here was they say causing the diseases, pestilences, earthquakes, fires in diverse places. And they are warning us the next financial calamity is coming. Here is what to watch. The global financial crisis is fading into history, but the roots of the next one might already be taking hold. Financial crisis struck rich countries every 20 years on average. Often the break between bursts is much shorter. First, growing pockets of debt as in the last time look like potential problems. Nowhere near as big as the mortgage bubble and no blown uh blown ups appear eminent. I don't want even to speak about the debt that the Kenyan government is having to the other countries. If you think you have a country again, JP Morgan stop cold one snake crisis to flash crashes and social not seen in 50 years. And so all these things spell a disaster. But uh, we have been warned time after time that these things will happen. The next crisis, crisis, the next crisis is still lacking in the financial system. We never address the root cause. The issue of depending, the issue of uh, depending on us, so as the issue of borrowing large sums of money. It uh, puts the country in a crisis. While it's sleepwalking towards another financial crisis, former UK uh, Prime Minister Brown warns, are we ready to handle the next financial crisis? And so you don't need even a statistician to tell you that the crisis, next global one financial crisis will strike in 2021's investment bank, JP Morgan. And people are saying, things happen but do we have to worry have we not been told that these things will be so have not the look chapter 21 warned that things the book of Luke, chapter 21 from verses 24 Let me access the book of Luke. Brothers and sisters, if we perish, we will perish because we lack knowledge. But we will perish because we are stiff naked and ignorant of taking heed to the word of the Lord. Verses 25 of Luke chapter 21. And this is what we read. And there shall be signs in the sun, and in the moon, and in the stars, and upon earth, distress of nations with perplexity, aporia, the sea and the waves roaring, men's heart failing them for fear, and for looking after those things which are coming on the earth, for the powers of heaven shall be shaken. And then shall they see the Son of Man coming in the clouds, with power and great glory. And when these things begin to come to pass, then look up and lift up your heads for your redemption. Grow with none. Brothers and sisters, we may say it will take 10 years. We may say it will take 5 years. That is what you may say. Some will say, no, this thing is not here. And how, however much we will postpone what is happening round about, it will surely come. Heaven, heaven help us in the financial crisis and brother the next financial crisis will be more severe socially and politically says billionaire investor Dalio this is the echo of 2018 the next financial crisis has begun and will be worse than 2008 crash economy so the bitcoin is actually it's not a good thing the Wall Street had its stock market in a crisis also. 
and as pestilences, famines, and all these things continue, you will see money losing its value. You will see papers being printed, but the printout of paper money is the show that the world has money in itself. But only they are panicking to be able to uh, uh, address the, the problem and to be able to uh, 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 to cover it up. But James chapter 5 tells us that the money is more and it is conquered. The next recession might be worse than the Great Depression. It will be declared that men are offending God by the violation of the Sunday Sabbath, that this sin has brought calamities which will not cease until Sunday observance shall be strictly enforced. And that those who present the claims of the fall, thus destroying reverence and they are troublers of God, preventing their restoration to divine favor and temporal prosperity. And so the world is looking for a temporal prosperity in these pestilences, in these famines, in these earthquakes, fires, and everything. But this is actual temporal prosperity, and it is not something that will last. The only thing that brethren shall endure is the kingdom of Christ when it is up, and you should be fighting to be a member of that kingdom. Not for love of being heaven, not for the fear of losing it, but for the love of Christ who died for us, for the love of God who gave his only begotten son. And while these things are happening, we are seeing the capitalism, the capitalism sharing, distributing of wealth, uh, the rich and the poor sharing. Capitalism is terrorism against all humanity. And so the distribution of wealth. Pope Francis argues that modern economies worship of God of money leads to disenfranchisement and extremism. And so there should be wealth distribution. Pope Francis attacks tyranny of unfettered capitalism, adultery of money. Capitalism gives a moral cloaked inequality, Pope Francis says. At Italian still. Voices of the world trying to bring in a solution, but the governments of this world have no solution for the problem they're having. It's private ownership of the means of production and operation for profit, the centralization of wealth to a few individuals. Now is one thing that we are seeing that it will be brought into question. And many are crying, let us distribute what we have. But can always decry One step backward, Vatican offices decry profoundly a moral culture of global financial system where actually money is held by a few people. Capitalism war on the Sabbath. Now, what does capitalism have to do with the Sabbath? Ask yourself about this. And we are, remember in the series of Latin introduction parties the financial crisis and I'm looking at the other side of, uh, of the coin where you have money but you can't spend it not where you don't have money and there has been a tremendous outcry about capitalism where actually a few people have money and there's centralization of wealth with a few people but um, now it is as war on Sabbath does capitalism have to do the Sabbath I'll read you the Sabbath commandment found in the book of Exodus. I want to show you something. I want us to learn together why they are echoing such a things. The book of Exodus chapter 20 verses 8. The Sabbath day, keep it holy. Let us look together at the screen. 
Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shall thou labor and do all thy work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work, thou nor thy son, nor thy daughter, thy man servant, nor thy maid servant, nor the cattle, nor the stranger that is within thy gates. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that is in them, and rested the seventh day, where for the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. I want you to look at verse 10. This is where capitalism is. When we are talking about capitalism, what is capitalism? Actually, capitalism is an economic system on the private ownership of the means of production and their operation for profit. Characteristics central to capitalism include private property, capital accumulation, wage labor, voluntary exchange, a price system, and competitive markets. Now, thought that for a moment, private ownership and all these things, but Capitalism war on Sabbath. The private ownership of things, that is what we are speaking about. The means of production and their operation for profit, the of wealth. And so the only way to fight capitalism is equal distribution of wealth. But if capitalism continues, they say it is a war on the Sabbath. Look at the command of the Sabbath again. Verses 10. This is where capitalism is. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. Thou shalt not do anyone thou, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, thy man servant, nor thy maid servant, nor the cattle, nor the stranger that is within the gate. So in verse 10, we have on the Sabbath, everyone is on the same level. The master the daughter, the son, the man servant, the maid servant, the cattle and the stranger are all on equality. And what is capitalism? Capitalism is a war on Sabbath. So, if we don't have to have a war on Sabbath, we must have an equal distribution of wealth. And this is how Sunday blue laws are brought in and the superior Sabbath so that actually it is a means of wealth distribution. It's a means of everyone being equal with the other people. Uh, I want you to think of these things as we look at the financial crisis and how they are playing around with it and what they are putting in place to fight this thing. What we are preparing for, brothers and sisters, is a revolution. And if you don't know what is a revolution, just visit the history of French. 1995, 1998, the Pope and Capitol poverty's biggest, where actually others have much and others have not. Pope Francis' mistrust of free markets at Chicago retort. And so everything is being put in place. He says the Pope wants of a ticking time bomb whose explosion will devastate market. And this is what we are saying. These are not news. These are all news. But when you read the Great Controversy, you come to understand what we are looking at. Vatican sees risk of social collapse in global economic order. In the context of global economic uncertainty, rampant inequality, and growing trade in illegal offshore bank accounts, the Vatican last day issued a document ethical guidelines for economic and financial systems and calling for stronger oversight by public authorities. Vatican offices urge recalibration of financial markets. Why are these things being put in place? Because of the pandemics, the pestilence, the earthquakes, fires that we are having. Vatican calls for of financial activities. So amidst chaos, order out of chaos. This is what we are seeing. The crisis that is coming. So we draw to an end. Pope calls for a new economic order, criticizes capitalism. And now, this call and 
these things that can cause for global authority to regulate markets. A Vatican document called for the gradual creation of a world political authority with the broad powers to regulate financial markets and reign in the inequalities and distortions of capitalist development. Man is heart failing them for fear and for looking after which are coming on the earth. For the powers of heaven shall be shaken. And then shall they see the Son of Man coming in the clouds with power and glory. And when these things begin to come to pass, then look up and lift up your heads for your redemption. Draw with night. These things, what do we have? Unemployment. Suddenly people have lost their jobs. Teachers have no jobs. Although we hear that they are on paid leave, because of the crisis. But tell me, the private schools, are they still paying their teachers at this moment? The businesses that had open and had uh, people working for them, are they still open? No, they are not. Because there is no distribution of goods, there is no distribution of goods, there is, there is no distribution of finances. And then there's layoffs. There are certain businesses right now are closed. And things are not easy. And so, how do we prepare for this crisis? Can we live in and having a place? What shall be these things? And he causes both small and great and poor, free and born to mark in their right hand or in their foreheads and that no man might bear or sell save he that have the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name this is where we are headed and I told you if the markets right now where I am the market is closed Luanda the market is closed Kisumu the market is not there and they are open a few hours for people to shop and then they are closed and I Ask your question, what if they place that the markets be open on Friday only between 4 to 6 p.m. and you have to buy or sell and also prepare for yourself? Brothers and sisters, when you see the clouds in the air, you don't ask your neighbor, train, take your umbrella with you. And I can tell you that uh, we are in that time where if these things can't wake up, the children who proclaim to be the children of truth, the light in them will be darkness. And if the light in us be darkness, how great the darkness. So, i like to tell you this in the book of Hebrews chapter 10. Hebrews chapter 10, let us read as we close. We are told, 23, let us fast the of our faith without wavering, for he is faithful that promised. And let us consider one another to provoke unto love and to good works. That is what we have to do at such a time as this. To hold fast unto our profession. And provoke each other to love and good works. This is our duty at such a time as this. Hebrews chapter 12. Hebrews chapter 12 and then I'll read you something in Exodus. Wherefore seeing we also compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside everything wait and the sin which so easily beset us and let us run with patience the race that is set before us looking unto jesus the author and finish of faith of our faith who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross despising the shame and is set down at the right hand of the throne of god for consider him that endures such a contradiction of sinners against himself lest you be wearied and faint in your minds 
it is a time to prepare brothers and sisters the one who has promised he will come surely he will come look at this the high priest had a golden bell and a pomegranate a golden bell and a pomegranate upon the hem of the round about and what was it and it shall be upon to minister and his son he had when he goeth into the holy place before the lord and when he cometh out that he die not <coughs> the bells of the high priest are ringing before us <coughs> And uh, what was the joy of the children of Israel? Joy of Israel. When the high priest was about to come from the most holy place, they were so much happy that. Uh, the high priest is coming out to bless them. What can it be said of this generation? Is it happy that uh, is it happy that the high priest is coming out of the most holy place. Married generation that uh, the high priest will get them unprepared. I want to read the last thing and then we close. We read something then we close. It is 4SG, page 9, paragraph 2. 4SG, page 9, paragraph 2. This is the last thing we are reading. Four SG, page 9, paragraph 2. This is it. Sisters, if there was a time for preparation, then this is the time. 4 SG, page 9, paragraph 2. It says, only once a year could the high priest enter into the most holy place after the most careful and solemn preparation. No mortal eye but that of the high priest could look upon the sacred grandeur of that apartment because it was the special dwelling place of God's visible glory. The high priest always ended it in with trembling while the people waited his return with solemn, solemn silence. Their earnest desire was to God for his blessing. Before the mercy seat, God conversed with the high priest. If he remained an unusual time in the most holy, the people were often terrified, fearing that because of their sins or some sin of the priest, the glory of the Lord had slain him. But when the sound of the tingling of the bells upon his garments were heard, they were greatly relieved. He then came forth and blessed the people. So we have been told the bells were to sound when he's going in and when he was coming out. And so, this is the time that the high priest is coming out of the holy place. You can hear the tingling of the bells. As a people, we should be happy that he is coming to bless us. But alas for this generation, because it can't say it is happy, because it is not prepared. How I pray that... Uh, as the Lord gives you chance, you will think again of what we have been learning for years. May the Lord be with us 
and guide us as even we await that special day, even the second coming of Let us be prepared. Let us not be like the foolish virgins who went to trim their lambs when it was too late. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we want to thank you because you are giving us every opportunity to be saved. Help us, Lord, that we may not be lost. Help us not to serve you because of fear, but give us strength to serve you in love. Bless the children as we enter into the Sabbath. It is in Jesus' name I pray. Amen.